Hey, what's up guys? So obviously AI has been really interesting lately and it's been making a ton of advancements here to many different industries. Well, I've been really curious, what can we expect as far as some improvements here uh, that AI could bring us for our radar detectors? Well, for that, I just sat down with ChatGPT uh, and it gave me 10 predictions for how AI can improve our detectors. And the ideas that it came up with, a lot of these were actually really interesting. And so in this video, I wanna go ahead and share uh, what GPT-4 has in mind, uh, my thoughts, as well as down in the comments, I'd like to hear uh, from you guys as well as we all kind of brainstorm together. Obviously, none of us has a crystal ball. We don't know what, if any, of this kind of stuff is gonna be implemented, but there's a lot of really interesting ideas that we should go ahead and sit down together and take a closer look at. All right, so jumping right into things, the first thing that it suggested is enhanced signal processing. Uh, essentially, AI algorithms can differentiate between radar signals from law enforcement devices and other false alarms more effectively, uh, reducing false alerts and increasing the overall accuracy of radar detectors. Uh, this is actually what Thea is fundamentally designed to do. Uh, now, this video is not intended to be a Thea video, right? I mean, for Denso, we have to talk about them because, of course, they've been working on a lot of this stuff for years. Obviously, there's been issues with them actually getting this to launch and right, getting it to market. So this video is not about the uh, vaporware production release, any of that kind of stuff. This is just focusing uh, on AI. Uh, but with that said, uh, the possibility of kind of moving forward from like having a person actually develop an algorithm, like if you think about the way GPS lockouts work, for example, it's basically if a detector sees a signal that meets certain criteria, a signal within a certain radius, within a certain frequency range, etc. Okay, that's a known false alert, lock it out. Uh, with AI, it could do much more sophisticated analysis, you know, like have the AI actually learn to tell the difference. A good example of that is like how AI is able to look at x-rays and find cancer and stuff. Like it can just look at a bunch of x-rays and learn how to detect this kind of stuff. Similarly, it could do something here with radar detectors to where you just give it real signals and false alerts and it can figure out different ways that maybe we haven't even thought of uh, to actually do a potentially better job of differentiating real alerts from false alerts. And this, uh, assuming it can be implemented and done successfully and released to market, this could be, I think, potentially a game changer for detectors to actually be able to trust them when they go off, right? Easier said than done, of course, but I think this is a really strong possibility here uh, of a way for AI to help us with our detectors. Number two, it's suggesting adaptive sensitivity, uh, saying AI can analyze driving patterns and locations to dynamically adjust the sensitivity of the radar detector, providing optimal protection in different situations. Now, adaptive sensitivity is something that we currently have in a simplistic way, kind of your auto mode at higher speeds, you get more sensitive detectors. Uh, when you go down at lower speeds, like in the city, it'll kind of back down the sensitivity. This could do the same sort of thing, but maybe say, what if you're driving on the highway on an urban area? Okay, maybe there's gonna be like shopping centers that you pass as you go by the highway. Maybe you want a little bit less sensitivity than if you're driving at high speeds, but in a wide open desert, or you're driving in the forest at higher speeds or whatever. Like in some situations you want maybe even more sensitivity independent of speed, right? Uh, and so I think this could be an option to where we can start to get kind of more sophisticated uh, automatic sensitivity adjustments beyond just higher speed, more sensitive, lower speed, less sensitive. Number three, crowdsource data. AI can help create real-time databases of radar and laser threats by analyzing and aggregating user-generated data, enhancing the performance of radar detectors for all users. So this would kind of be something like Waze or Escort Live, but taken to the next level, right? We already have uh, cloud-sourced alerts in Waze, push a button on the app and say, hey, there's a cop here, other people can verify it. Uh, Escort Live can do something similar here uh, with detector alerts being pushed out to the cloud, and then those alerts get pushed back to other Escort Live users. Now, this could be done in a much more sophisticated way. I know there's ways of doing it, but a lot of the issues with this are actually legal restrictions and kind of IP restrictions. Like uh, Escort Live actually used to be able to pull Waze data back in the day, for example, but Waze has actually shut that off. And so Escort no longer has the ability uh, to share Waze information via Escort Live. Uh, additionally, there's been uh, some third-party developers who make apps who wanna say maybe like, hey, what if uh, we can integrate with the Valentine One, like Highway Radar or JPP One or something. What if we had a plugin that could basically take Valentine One alerts and share them to the cloud, just like Escort does with Escort Live. Unfortunately, Escort does have some patents on this. And so there are some legal issues with actually implementing some of these features. Uh, and so I think this particular one, it sounds really cool, but there might be some legal restrictions that could hamper it more than like the technological improvements uh, would allow for. 
That said, this is taking it one step further and it's saying that uh, this can also be used to enhance the performance of the radar detectors for all users. And this could be nice too. Let's say instead of sharing just the fact that there's been radar used in this area, what if they're also sharing the frequency of these signals? Well, in that sense, detectors can automatically start to optimize the frequency ranges that they scan for using band segmentation, for example, uh, to really help kind of dial in the performance and have it be hyper-focused on the frequency ranges that are used by police in this specific area. So you could actually have like this data base, uh, the detectors can start to pull from not only for police spotted alerts, but also how to optimize their settings and frequency ranges that they scan for to start giving you uh, optimal performance for different parts of the country or different parts of the world. Number four, uh, context aware filtering. AI can understand the context of your driving environment, such as urban or rural areas, and adjust the radar detector settings accordingly to minimize false alarms. Uh, this kind of goes back to what we just talked about with the automatic sensitivity adjustments, but there's other settings that are available too. Uh, things like TSR, TSF, like your traffic sensor filter, that can be nice to cut down on false alerts, but that does typically impact uh, K-band performance. What if the detector could just kind of intelligently figure out what settings are optimal for different locations so you didn't have to know, like, do I need TSR in this area? Or I'm taking a road trip across the country. What settings do I need for different parts of the country? Uh, there are apps that are available, like JBV1. You can actually custom build your own profiles uh, as you drive through different areas, but that's going to require you to do your own research to know what settings are optimal for different locations, uh, to run the app to make it ha to make this happen. Uh, what if AI could just kind of figure all this stuff out for you so you didn't have to be an expert in different settings that are optimal in different locations and having to do the research and understand what settings are important in your detector? What if the detector could just figure all that stuff out for you and just start optimizing itself automatically. That could actually be really cool. I know up to this point, people have suggested trying this manually by like having people create their own databases and then we all share information. So uh, maybe you could run one person settings in one area or another person settings in another area. Uh, there's been concerns of like what happens if somebody suggests settings that are incorrect. And so somebody winds up getting a ticket because they uh, adjusted settings incorrectly, right? And then somebody's detector does an alert to radar, boom, they get a ticket. So there's always concern about the accuracy of these uh, settings that are being suggested by other people. And so while this stuff has been suggested to be done in the past manually, people are always kind of concerned about the importance of accuracy uh, of these settings. And so that would be something that we would want to make sure, of course, if your detector is changing its own settings, you want to make sure that it doesn't just turn off detection of something you actually need, right? So it, it would take a little bit of work, but it's definitely a cool idea. Next up, number five, predictive threat detection. AI can analyze historical data and traffic patterns to predict where radar and laser threats are more likely to occur, helping drivers anticipate and avoid potential threats. So analyzing historical data, this is also something that's currently available. There's a couple implementations of this. Uh, Escort, for example, can give you uh, police spotted alerts, um, kind of like a database of that that's independent from your real-time alerts. It can basically reference like, hey, we've seen a lot of radar or laser alerts in this area. This seems to be a popular area for speed traps. Okay, we'll go ahead and give you a separate notification for that. That's actually a feature in Escort Live. Uh, similarly, Highway Radar, uh, let's say it's referencing crowdsource data. It's saying there's a lot of people online who are manually reporting that there's police in this area. This is an area where there's commonly a lot of speed traps that are in use. And so I'm going to kind of report this as like a higher threat area where there may or may not be an officer right now. It's an area where they're frequently like to camp and maybe issue tickets. Uh, maybe you could drive through this area and you might be on high alert because it's possible that nobody's reported an officer yet. They just arrived, but it's a common speed trap area. So you might want to uh, keep your eyes peeled. So having uh, kind of more historical information like this, again, making it more automated and getting a lot more data, uh, this could be a really useful feature as well. One thing that I would like to see is it's definitely possible to be getting more false alerts from these because again, this is reporting an area where cops like to set up speed traps. This is not saying there's a cop here right now. So having maybe more sophisticated filtering, if you will, knowing when not to alert, that's something that I think AI could potentially do a pretty good job at, just looking for other patterns based on time of day or holidays or weather or whatever else, like taking in a lot more data points to figure out uh, what's the most likely times when an officer will be here or not. Number six. Uh, integration with vehicle systems. Uh, so AI can work in conjunction with other vehicle systems such as navigation and adaptive cruise control uh, to provide a comprehensive, context-aware driving experience. So this is one I was thinking of and I'm like, okay, could this maybe integrate, let's say it knows that your car has blind spot radar. Let's say you drive a Mazda or a Honda that has blind spot radar. Maybe the detector can automatically sense that and start to knock it out for you. That could be cool. Or even something like a uh, JBV1 has a cool feature. If you're integrated with the uh, TMG laser jammer, 
Uh, it's called brake force detection. The idea is when you get shot with laser uh, and you're bam, hard on the brakes to slow down, uh, the phone can use its G sensor uh, to detect when you're hard on the brakes and then when you slow down and you let or when you let off the brakes, uh, it notices, okay, we can go ahead and uh, tell the laser jammers to disarm and stop jamming because you've slowed down. Uh, this kind of feature is something that could also be implemented into radar detectors, for example, just to give you kind of more uh, control of what's going on with the detector based on what's happening in the car. Uh, we see stuff like the detector can automatically vary its volume depending on your speed. If you're driving on the highway, maybe there's more road noise, and so you're going to want louder alerts. Or if you've got the music playing, maybe the detector can automatically raise its alert volume, but then when it gets quiet in the car, slow down, turn on the music, whatever, it can lower its volume. So giving you kind of like more integration with what's going on in the car uh, could just help refine the experience and give you uh, more useful features as well. So this is something that obviously with some creativity and some thought behind it, like there's definitely some possibilities here too. Next up, number seven, uh, personalized profiles. AI can learn from a driver's habits and preferences, creating personalized profiles to tailor the radar detector's settings for each user. Now we currently have something like this either with apps like JBV1, you can build in profiles for your V1 for different people, or uh, the Whistler Titan has the ability to do three different profiles. And so depending on who's driving the car, maybe they want certain settings or colors or languages or whatever. Uh, a common use case that I've seen for this is let's say one person's driving the car and they're like, I want a really quiet detector, right? I don't want false alerts, just alert me if it's real. Another person may say, hey, I don't necessarily want uh, really aggressive false alert filtering. I'm okay with more false alerts, but I really want to know what's going on uh, around the car. Now, this kind of stuff could be done automatically. What if instead of maybe you as a user having to say like, okay, what settings do I need to program? Should I have TSR on or off? Should I turn K-band sensitivity down from 100 to 70 or should I drop it to 60 or 50? You know, like to really take the time to learn what settings are optimal with a little bit of trial and error and research. What if you could just tell your detector like, hey, I'm getting too many false alerts. Can you uh, cut down on that a little bit? Okay, what if it can just automatically know where you're driving, what the settings are, and how to start adjusting the settings for you? What if you could just talk to your detector and it can start adjusting its settings on its own and that way people wouldn't have to spend a ton of time <laughs> trying to learn all the nuances of radar detectors and all that stuff. I'm sure most people probably don't even mess with their settings at all. And so having an easier and more automated way to automatically configure a detector for different people, I think it'd be pretty awesome. Number eight, voice commands and alerts. Uh, AI-powered voice assistants can enable hands-free control of radar detectors and provide real-time spoken alerts about per, uh, potential threats. I guess this is kind of what we just talked about before with like having the detector change its settings just by saying, I want you to do this. Like that could be really cool, right? We don't currently have that. Even things like Siri and your Amazon Echo Dot and Google Smart Home stuff, those are kind of smart, but not to the sophistication that we have with something like uh, GPT-4, for example. So getting kind of like more voice control and voice activated stuff, that could be really good. Uh, I have seen some of this uh, available with uh, apps like Highway Radar. You can do some basic stuff with voice control. Uh, Waze is going to allow you to do this as well, just to say like, you know, report police spotted on the side of the road without having to tap your phone. So the voice control stuff can be very useful when you're driving, so you don't have to push buttons. You don't have to look at your phone. You don't have to look at the detector. Just do it with your voice. So being able to talk to it more naturally just as a person and not have to remember the exact phrasing and verbiage to issue certain commands, or maybe it can do something to like better hear your voice if there's road noise or music playing or whatever, just to do a better job of understanding you in a situation where it might be hard for the microphone to pick up your voice. I think there's a lot of possibilities here for uh, ways that this could actually be done to really help improve things above and beyond some of these simplistic implementations of voice control uh, that we currently have. Number nine, uh, enhanced compatibility. AI can facilitate seamless integration of radar detectors with various devices and platforms, including smartphones, in-car infotainment systems, and connected vehicle ecosystems. This is something that we're seeing a lot of these days, so like detectors that can integrate with your phone to add new functionality, whether it's change settings, improve the lockouts, share alerts through the cloud. Uh, I know a lot of people are saying, hey, can I get these alerts to display on my car's heads-up display through like Android Auto or CarPlay? Uh, a lot of cars now have in-car Wi-Fi, so detectors can connect that way to get cloud alerts, automatic updates. Like So all of this kind of connected stuff is definitely something that we've been seeing a big push on uh, the past couple years. Now, the question is like, how could AI take this further? This would definitely require some brainstorming, of course, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. I think one of the big ideas might be a lot of the uh, uh, the stuff that we've been talking about so far, just getting all the crowdsourced information or information about the current weather or traffic information or uh, hotspots, like where do cops often like to hang out um, and 
do like speed traps, right? Getting real-time information, that could actually help the detector optimize its settings to help cut down on false alerts and give you better performance depending on what's going on. If you're driving in the rain, should it maybe cut down on the sensitivity because you're driving slower or should it crank up the sensitivity, particularly on K-band in case uh, radar can kind of be blocked by some of the rain, kind of absorbed by the rain. Like there's a lot of stuff that I think could be done here uh, when you start taking in a lot of, uh, of the information that's available through the cloud. Um, there's a ton of possibilities here that developers and manufacturers could play with could even ask GPT-4 to suggest some ideas of how this stuff could be done, but I think there's a lot of uh, room for growth and options here of just new things that could be implemented to give us a better experience overall. And then finally, number 10, uh, continuous learning and updates. AI algorithms can learn and adapt to new radar and laser technologies used by law enforcement, ensuring that detectors remain effective and up to date. This could be definitely be a cool one. Like imagine, let's say, uh, officers start using a lot more instant on in certain parts of the country and detectors are noticing this kind of uh, pattern and then they could say okay maybe i need to start optimizing my settings uh, to cut down on some of the delays and make sure i can respond extra quickly in these areas or if they notice uh, hey you're driving through this part of new york and we're seeing a lot of reports of uh, 34 8 alerts higher than 34 7. as i mentioned before you can kind of like focus a detector's scanning range to really get hyper focused on certain frequency ranges and so uh, as detectors maybe share information they notice uh, what types of threats are being used in different areas they can start kind of optimizing the way that they're scanning similarly on the laser side what if they can be used to detect kind of new pulse patterns that are used in the field for uh, different laser guns, different cars with like uh, collision avoidance systems that are laser based. Like there's a lot more kind of monitoring of what it can do, paying attention to stuff on the road and then how it could counter some of these threats to give you uh, better laser jamming capabilities and fewer false alerts. So like, I just think there's a lot of possibilities here of what can be done. I'm just kind of brainstorming ideas off the top of my head. <laughs> I'd love to hear from you guys too. Some of your ideas for things that could potentially be possible. Uh, these are just kind of some ideas that ChatGPT has been suggesting. Definitely fun ideas to think about. I don't know if any of this stuff is going to be implemented, how many of them will be implemented, how successful they'll be. Again, we don't have a crystal ball here, but this has definitely been interesting just to kind of like play with ideas and possibilities. And so anyway, yeah, I think there's a lot of options here of how AI could be used to help improve our detectors. And these are just 10 ideas. If you guys have more ideas, definitely let me know down in the comments. I'd love to uh, kind of continue this conversation with you guys. If any developers or manufacturers are like, oh, that's a cool idea, go for it, go and implement it. Uh, there may be some legal restrictions and patents you'd have to work around. So obviously do your own research on that kind of stuff. But uh, I, yeah, AI seems to be kind of transforming a lot of in different industries. And I think it's definitely possible for us to see uh, further improvements here uh, on the radar detector side. And so. I can go on and on, but yeah, anyway, this sounds awesome. This sounds exciting. I'm looking forward to seeing kind of what we can see uh, over the next couple years as AI continues to advance. And so with that said, that's it for now. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys are doing great and I'll see you in the next video.